Hi, Scott Israel with First Vision, and we're working with the FLIR AX8. In previous videos, we saw what was necessary to actually uh, get a camera up and going. The parts required were the camera, the M12 to RJ45 connector, a power over Ethernet connector, and an RJ45 to RJ45 connector from the PoE connector to your computer or switch. In this video, we're going to install the software and hook up the camera and show how to use the software. So the first thing that we need to do is get the software. And you can do that by going to support.flir.com. And it will pull up a page that looks like this. You'll uh, need to be registered to get anything. And the simplest way to get the software, I find, is to go to the Downloads tab type in IP config for your search and it will pull up a link that if you click on will expand to both an exe and a zip file. The zip file is much larger but I find that you should download the zip file and it has all the associated software that you need and it will make the installation go very smooth. So download your software which I've already done and uh, then you'll install it and run something that will look like this, which is the FLIR IP config software. And what we want to do here is look for the camera. And it's found the camera at this IP address. Now I could do a couple of things. That was the refresh tool. This will open up that camera in the, the web browser so you can play with it. And finally, we can modify the IP address if we want. So we can type in whatever we need here. So I'll go ahead and open the camera here. Uh, it will come up asking for a user and password name. Uh, I've already used this camera once before. So uh, it's default admin and admin. And what you'll see in your web browser has a bunch of tabs across the top. Uh, we're in the main tab for the camera. If we go to the settings tab, we can play with uh, a whole bunch of settings that I'll show later. In the storage tab, you can have your images and videos. And finally, there's a help tab. So let's just go back to the camera tab. What we're seeing is uh, the AX8 that's just on a table pointing up at a fluorescent light. And the first thing that we notice is Along the side here, there is a temperature gradient. And there is one measurement point over here. It's telling you that it's at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. You can move that point if you need to. And I'll put it over here where it's warmer. Now it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I want, I could change my color palette. And it will show you various uh, color temperature gradients. Let's go through a couple of the settings up top here. The first setting is, do you want to look at the picture visually? So there's just that fluorescent light. Do I want to look at it just with the thermal camera? Or what I think is great is when you superimpose the visual image on top of the thermal image, and you get a much clearer picture. Uh, now, you probably can't see it at this resolution, but I have a grating that's over this fluorescent light, and I can actually see the individual gratings. Now, the next uh, button over, you can adjust the distance for the uh, focus of the camera. The button after that is actually, there's a little light on the camera. You can turn it on or off. You probably can't see that, but I can. In the next button, we have a horizontal flip or a vertical flip for your video. And finally, this is a calibration button. Here's where you really need to use the camera. Now, this will put up spot measurements. So this just put up a second spot measurement here. You can see, and you can drag this to wherever you want. So over here now, we have two spot measurements with two temperatures. The little box draws you a box, which, of course, you can change the size of if you want. And you can move it. 
And what that shows is the min, max, and average. You can put up the six uh, objects or points that you want to measure, and you can remove them by hitting the little trash can. But more importantly, what you could do is you could set alarms. And this is really how you'd use the camera. So we'd click the alarm on or off button up top here. So should we activate it or not? It's not activated right now. And then you could set the condition for the temperature. Do you want it above or below a temperature? This box is the temperature itself that you're going to put in. There's a hysteresis, so it wouldn't be ringing back and forth. You can set that to whatever temperature you need. There's also a time, so does it have to be uh, longer or uh, shorter than the condition that you have put up here in the amount of milliseconds? And finally, you want to capture images or videos. Now, for the alarm action, you can have it output in a digital signal, and that you need the M12 to flying lead connector for. Or we can send an email or upload to an FPT, FTP site. Sorry about that. Finally, we can uh, load and save the presets that are in the camera. So this generally shows how you would use the camera. The next tab we have is for the settings. Now these are somewhat self-explanatory. There's a camera ID and you can change that number and the uh, letters. There's regional settings, so I can set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius and uh, feet or meters. Uh, the date or time can come from your computer or you can put it in uh, through an NTP server. Your time zone here, I haven't changed that. It's, uh, I'm in Eastern time. The network settings, which I think are somewhat more important. Specifically, do you want to obtain an IP address automatically or do you want to have a manual IP address? I think in a lot of uh, factory floor settings, you might want to set this to be a static IP address. And then some user settings. You can obviously change your passwords for the admin account, the user account, and there's also just a viewer account. Finally, the alarms, and here we can change the email address that it's going to and whether or not it's authenticated. Of course, you can change the username and password. And the same exact settings for your FTP site and where it's going to go. There's a, a little change for the web interface theme, whether you want light or dark. And of course, in the system, where you can restart the camera or you can update your firmware. If I go back to the camera tab, I can snap pictures, so I could save a snapshot. So it's saving that. And then if I go into my storage tab, there's my saved picture. We can also save some video as well. Finally, along the bottom here, we can uh, have the picture go to full screen and another tab that we can hide the overlays. So this gives you a general explanation on how you would use the FLIR AX8 software just through a web browser. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos with some more detail on the FLIR AX8.